For this unit project, you're going to create a simple still life painting. During this unit, we're going to learn a variety of different tools and techniques that it takes to create a painting in Photoshop. You're going to take all of those tools and techniques and apply them to your own digital painting. In this video, before I show you how I created my painting, I want to go over the, all the steps and the things I'll be looking for in your project that you'll turn into me. The first thing you'll need to do is to create your own photograph of your own composition. I do not want you to find an image on the internet and use that as your composition. Instead, I want you to find the objects that you want to use, arrange them how you would like, and then take your own photograph. When you do that, you should also be thinking about the setting and the lighting and how everything should be arranged for your own. But do not find something that's online. Instead, I want you to create your own composition. When picking your objects, try to pick objects that can be broken down into their basic simple shapes. Things like cylinders, spheres, cubes, circles, all of those are great to start off with when learning how to do a simple still life. Try to stay away from things that are too complex at this time, things that are like figures or figurines. Next, I'm looking for three different kinds of objects. One of your objects needs to be very shiny and reflective. So in my case, I've got this glass blue bottle. So if you have anything that's maybe metallic or chrome or plastic, that would be very appropriate. The next object needs to be something that's very matte. So in this case, I've got a metallic teapot but it's not shiny the way the bottle is. It's got a good matte finish to it. It's also got some good shadows and good reflective uh, colors on its surface. And the final object needs to be something that's very weathered and textured. In my case, I've got an old baseball. You can have an old shoe or a brick or something that shows a lot of texture within its particular shape. And finally, when creating your composition, try to have everything fit nice and neatly within your frame. You can either have a portrait type of layout where everything is vertical, or you can have a landscape where everything is laid out more horizontal. Either way is fine for this particular project. You can also place things around your object. So in my case, I found this red cloth and placed it as a good setting for its composition. Once you get a composition that you like, the next thing to do is to set up your Photoshop document. So when I go to File and Create a New Document, you can keep the same proportions and dimensions as your photograph, but make sure the width and the height is larger than 10 inches. For example, my photograph was 17 inches wide and 24 inches tall. So as long as each one is at least 10 inches, that's okay, and you can adjust it to the needs of your composition. The resolution needs to be set at least at 300 pixels per inch, and we're going to be working in RGB color mode. Also, check on artboards so that you can have two different artboards, one to do your painting and another to place your reference image on. And for now, you can keep the background contents to be white, although later on you may change it up. And remember, your orientation can either be portrait or landscape depending on how you photograph your composition. As far as the name of this document, you can call it Still Life, and then be sure to put your name on it as well so that I know that it's yours. When you create the document, this will have it nice and set up. I'm going to jump back to my original painting and we'll look at this one for the example. Let's have a look at the layers and get an idea of how I set up my document. First, I've got two different artboards. One of my artboards will be a reference image artboard, and this is where I can place my picture and move it around as I complete and do my painting. This way it's out of the way and so I can see exactly what I'm painting on as I paint it. I don't want to paint directly on top of my image. Instead, I want to have it off to the side so that I can get a more natural looking painting and get a good feel for using my brushes and working with different images. My second artboard is my actual painting artboard, and you can see this is the one that's got all the different layers to create the composition. I'm not painting in just one layer. I want to be able to use the different tools and techniques in order to create this composition in a variety of different layers. To give you a breakdown of what each of these layers is doing, let me turn off visibility and show you how I worked layer by layer to create this particular composition. There we go. The first thing I did is I started off with my image on my painting artboard. This would allow me to select and trace off all the details that are necessary. Let me place this one down at the very, very bottom. 
So with it below all the base layers, I created the base colors for each of my objects. So for instance, my glass bottle was given a base color and a base shape. My little tea kettle and also the baseball all have their own particular shapes. Uh, let's see, there's the base for the ball. On top of that, I also started to draw off and make notes for where the details were within my composition. These would, are things that will help me locate uh, particular details and also where my shadows will fall. They don't have to be anything that's too technical as long as I get an idea of where to paint. These are also on their own layers so that I can go back and be able to turn them off and erase them and not be able to see them in my own final composition. Once I've got my base colors and my base uh, details placed down, this is where I can drag my image back onto its own artboard and then I can start actually executing my painting, putting in the details for the shadows and the textures. I like to start off with the background. In my case, I did a gradient fill of just a solid red, and then I kind of went back in and I sketched out and marked in where the folds of the, uh, the cloth were. Working from this, I used my clipping mask to paint inside of each of the different base colors. So in my case, for the glass, this is where I would paint the highlights and shadows within its own layer, and then I can turn off the top layer to turn off all the details. Same way for the baseball. On top of it, it's got a layer for all of the shadows. I even had another layer for cleaning up and adding more texture, and I can turn off the details and I'm left with this. And finally, the same for the tea kettle. I can turn on the shadows and highlights for it in its own layer, and then turn off the details on top of this until I'm left with that composition. So what I'm going to be looking for from your composition and your project is that you have two different artboards. One artboard will have your image and the other artboard will have your painting. Inside of the painting artboard I expect to see base layers and shadow and detail layers that are clipped inside of that. We'll go into the details using the, all of the different techniques and practice it uh, before we jump in and actually use it within this particular project. All right, with that said, let's jump into the project and show you exactly how I created my composition. As you watch through this video, keep in mind that it's sped up. It's going very, very fast just so you can see the entire thing. I don't expect you to work very fast on creating your composition. Slow down and take your time. Take it one step at a time. It doesn't have to look picture perfect. As a matter of fact, I want it to look very painterly. The main thing I want you to get from this project is that you understand the Photoshop brushes, how to work with Photoshop layers, and how each of the layers interact with each other in creating this basic still life composition.